But Coach uh, Chris Hall is the DB's coach um, at Louisville High School in Texas. Uh, coach is going to talk some of their match coverage and kind of what they do. Uh, coach Coach reached out to me, and um, like I said, they do some good things down there. It's a very good football program down there in the great state of Texas. Um, but Coach is going to kind of talk what they do with match coverage. And uh, Coach, the floor is yours. Well, thank you for inviting me. Just on behalf of Michael Odell and the whole defensive staff at Louisville, we just want to say thank you for letting us kind of come on and share what we do. We're really proud of what we have built here at Louisville and, you know, welcome to share anything that we've learned over the last couple of years as a staff. Um, by the way, we feel we have a really strong staff, not just as a defense coordinator, but our defensive line coach, you know, Gabe McLaughlin, our, D, you know, linebackers coach, Robert Lewis, and, you know, rest of the staff, you know, Bobby Watkins and, you know, Jane Wright, they just do a fantastic job. And I'm sorry, I forgot uh, uh, Tracy Fight, also coach D-line. They just do a great job, which makes my job really easy on the back end to try to cover up because we have some really good players. So I'm going to go fast. Um, I have a lot of diagrams for you today, and then we'll get some video. So I'm going to jump in and out of program, so I hope everybody can see the screens. If any time it doesn't let you see it, just let me know. But, you know, I firmly believe in building a toolbox. And what I mean by that is giving kids the ability to play football in a way that they're in control of their situations when they're on the field. And so what I mean by that, when we start teaching quarters, the first concepts we'll get into is talking to them about understanding that when we're playing our quarters concepts, that we're building a square, we're building a box, and then we want to be a four over three principle, uh, be plus one in the passing game, maybe a little light box in the run game at times, but understanding that we want to put our defensive backs in a position where we can double team, uh, where we can do things called brackets and do other things to, if you will, take away receivers that may give you trouble um, when you're facing RPOs or other types of concepts where good players can get you in some bad spots. So, you know, one of the first tools we'll give them is just like seven meg. Um, everybody's seen the saving system. It's what we build our system out of here at Louisville. And, you know, what we're saying when we're playing any of our seven rules is it's still quarters. Our safety is still reading two to one with proper principles. Uh, but it's just what we're doing in number two. So, if, you know, we're playing right here. Our overhang is all of number two unless he gets a fast something. You know, it's unless something principles, right? And our corners are playing meg, which just stands for man where he goes we'll give them another toolbox where we'll get them into other things and you know as you can see here um you know with meg and then mod you know we can be in an off principle right whether if you will playing from a press or a bail um and we just try to give them a pool or, or a toolbox where you know i know you can go back and watch these videos and then go through these notes and diagrams so i'll have some others to show you but what I'm just trying to establish is you would just give these kids a set of tools so that we really don't build, a, even though we run a bunch of coverages, they just run a bunch of, if you will, techniques. And we allow the techniques in which we build in these kids to be, if uh, you know, kind of the scheme that we build. So um, we always talk about in spring football right now, we're just teaching technique, technique, technique. So the slides I just went through very quickly, you know, as a corner, he's going from being mag, you know, he's mess, mod. And just learning those techniques and applying those pattern matching rules over and over and over again. Um, that strong safety is playing a read two to one quarters principles, right? He's a robber. Um, he's not a real aggressive backpedaler out there. He's a slow to go guy. We use a baby scooch to kind of slow him down in tempo routes. But it's really who are we asking number two to be handled by? You know, if we want number two to be handled by the, if you will, the corner, we can play some type of this concept you see on the screen here, which is a palms comp set where we're allowing the corner to kind of hang and read number two to the flat. If we want it to be more aggressive with our overhang and have him match to the flat, you know, to the flat, we'll play like you see here, mod, right? And it's just what we're asking our overhangs and safeties and corners and our linebackers that side, again, four over three box principles, how we're going to work together and how we can put ourselves in a good situation. Now, we don't run all these calls in a game. You know, what we do is we pick the menu that we want to run. And then from there, you know, we decide what we want to do with a game plan. Um, today, I don't really want to talk to you about box quarter principles. I really like to talk to you about our quarters aggressive double team principle, which we call cones. And, you know, a lot of people have, you know, different variations or concepts of what they believe cones and brackets are, yes, we run brackets. Um, what brackets are to us is when you see us running what we would call stubby in a minute, where our star overhang is all of number two and less three is fast out. So it's different than when you're playing a double team, which we're talking about here with our cones. 
So yes, we have brackets in our seven system, but we also have what we call cones and we like to differentiate those between each other where I don't know if a lot of programs do that. Sometimes they keep cones and brackets kind of the same because it's an in and out kind of principle, but we like for our players to excuse me, kind of separate and kind of put those learning uh, kind of categories into buckets. So they understand that when we're asking them to play brackets, they're doing certain things. When we're asking them to play boxes, they're doing certain things. And as you're going to see here, when we ask them to play cones, it's asking them to do something completely different because what cones are, are an aggressive double team. In this situation here, you're seeing one of our Indian calls. And what that means is that we're aggressively doubling the inside receiver. The techniques that we teach the players are the boomer technique with the star, which means he is OU. He has number two out and up the field. He is the top piece of this man double team, meaning if that H runs a vertical seam down the seam or up the field, we expect the star to be on top, which means that that star is out of the run game. He cannot be, if you will, involved in the run game if you have to carry someone vertical. And that's something we'll get into just a little bit with the run game is that when you ask someone to carry someone vertically in the run game or, or in the pass game, you can't ask them to be involved in the run game. So we tell them this, your coverage will always match your alignment. So align to cover and you'll be right. And the next thing is always, if you're carrying someone vertical, you do not have a run fit. So in this situation, the star doesn't have a run fit. And we're in, if you will, double team with that strong safety and that star. I can get some techniques later with that strong safety. He's old school slam stepping. And he's playing a Hoosier technique, which means he has him inside and up. So any inside breaking route, like a shallow crosser, he'll come off that roof and that star will fox the post and start snaking the dig. Because we feel like any time that you've made us where we don't have to believe you're going to go four verticals and quarters, we can close the middle of the field with some type of fox or snake principle and look from the backside and poach some routes and see if we can still so I mean, if you will middle of the field close principles like we were here and talked earlier which was a fantastic talk you know i just want to give a shout out to you know what the coach roberts did earlier when his covered three principles you know we're just trying to close the middle of the field as well when we're in quarters because like what he was saying what it gives you visually in the defense the next thing we also do is just we can change leverage. So it's like week to week, and we'll show you when we played Allen here a couple of years back when they had a really strong kind of slot receiver, big and physical. And we didn't like the matchup of having the star outside and the strong safety inside. So we went to a switch, right, in the old seven switch worlds, which we called Savage, so it might start Indian coverage. And we're just changing the leverages of the Boomer and the Hoosier. So now the star is the Hoosier. He has him inside and up, and he is the underneath piece, where now the strong safety is the top piece being the one who is outside and up playing the Boomer technique. Um, I, you know, you can go back and hit pause and pattern match and see all the things that we're doing down here um, for all the routes to go with this coverage. Um, and that's one thing is that we like to tie this Indian with an outlaw. So just like the Indian starts with the inside word, we're going to double team the inside receiver. The outlaw outward gives us the ability to do the same thing on the backside. Now, um, this puts a lot of pressure, as you see, on our inside linebackers. They're going to play what's called a bongo technique. We'll show you some details about. But what we're again trying to do is we're trying to eliminate the vertical RPO threats in today's modern offenses by creating aggressive double teams on the inside and outside receivers of these two back offenses that are trying to create RPO and run gap scheme situations so that we need Sam and, you know, or sorry, we need our interior linebackers um, to be in the box, but also having safeties kind of Braveheart Terminator, which I'll get a little bit being cover to action or action to cover principles so that we can sling the fits, kind of slow it down and try to keep these double team cones on these receivers as we're trying to also fit the run game. Um, I'm not going to get into any other shape, so I'm again try to stop that slide and I'm going to go to a new slide. So my new share um, I'm going to go to real quick is going to be just the seven Indian, you know, pattern matches. Um, you know, the thing I think about, you know, um, when you're talking coverage is just how you're pattern matching, right? And how you're putting things together. And, you know, so what here you see is one of our base test calls. Um, uh, when we get two back formations, you know, we're going to be playing Indian on one side, outlaw on the other, and using our double teams. You can see the bongo in action, right? You can see those blue and green lines having to match that backfield. So having to use indicator eyes and being able to play two man light box principles. And that's why we got to do things up front and play gap and a half because we're really trying to be stack track fallback. Um, all those terms you hear where we sling in our fists because we're really trying to slow things down, make things roll off the table um, so that we can be late in the run fit and try to play seven man run spacing as much as we can. Um, the next diagram that I'm going to show you, I'm sorry, let me get going. 
sorry. Sorry, my screen's out. There it goes. They go back one. So I jumped on my screen. So the next one is, you know, this is just that they were to attach that tight end, right, and get into 11 personnel things. Um, this is a Bronco check that I stole way back from Gary Patterson when he was at TCU. Um, you can see many, many things online. These are the same rules that we apply uh, when you see his Bronco coverage, when he's using his split safety quarters principles. Um, so we're doing the same thing. Um, we will play some outlaw. So at times when you go visit other colleges and universities, you're going to see them playing outlaw on that outside receiver. But, you know, just to kind of go quicker so I can get you into more diagrams and film, um, you can see that we check stubby, play outlaw on the backside of the tray. Um, anytime it's three by one, we'll be stubby. We can play cloud. We can play different concepts. Um, but again, the main idea is that we're playing if you will, cone aggressive double teams and allowing our defense to kind of be a light box fit and try to start the RPO and force the offense to, um, to move the ball down the field um, as slowly as we can, to make them run as many plays as we can efficiently and things like that. So there's some of the boot rules and different things as well. So again, I'm going to stop my share and bounce around real quick and uh, move from different things and different presentations, if you will. Me, um, You know, I think one of the things that I think is so important is, um, you know, when you're playing these coverages and you're playing these concepts, sorry, I lost you guys real quick. Um, the next screen I wanted to show to you, Coach. I'm sorry. Uh, you're good. Apologize. It can't be seen. Um, it's the PowerPoint. Are you able to see the PowerPoint right now? No, I just, you, nothing is currently shared on our end. All right. So I feel like I've lost a share. I don't know if you can help me out real quick. Um, let's see. Share my screen. Um, let me, I think I fixed yep. it. Sorry, my internet's kind of jumping around. Are you seeing that now? Yeah, you're good. All right, coach. So like guys, I want to just get to you real quick. And again, I'm going to go real fast through this. You know, this is just kind of how we fit the run. All right. So the thing is we're trying to do is use terminating and brave hop principles off this boomer and this Hoosier concepts of how we can slow down the run fit and use our linebackers and using gap and a half principles up front so that our linebackers know that when those double teams start to climb, we can fall back into the run game. And again, fit it like seven man run spacing when it comes to our mindsets. So I'm just going to, again, kind of go through this quickly. I know you guys can go back and hit pause and watch this. Um, get a hold of me at any time you want to talk, but that way allow I can get a little bit of the film and you can kind of see this stuff in action, um, which is, again, why you, most of you kind of come to these clinics. You know, you know the diagrams, you know the schemes, um, but, you know, being able to see this stuff run um, at the high school level is what, you know, really we're trying to do here. So the last thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to get into the film. Um, you know, the thing I think that's so important about what we try to do again at Louisville is that, you know, we try to the very best we can to coach these kids, um, you know, to be in a college defense, you know, and I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people, um, but, you know, we take great pride in that. Um, again, can you all see my screen again? Yes, sir. All right. So, you know, the thing I think is, again, we're calling these don't, uh, two on one doubles. But, you know, when you go to college practices and when our kids have left our program, they're running these coverages and these cone concepts. And we feel that by being able to categorize these techniques in the buckets, we're able to do these things. So like the boomer technique, this is something we will use when we're running our grip list match principles. When we play more of a, if you will, match cover three, unlike Coach Roberts talked about earlier, we're more of a rip list match cover three. So our overhangs just have to use the boomer technique when they're playing the rip list match cover three middle of the field close defenses we use the hoosier technique again it's an inside and up portion allowing you to understand i'm underneath and being the if you will more in the run, kind of the run fit but you know like we showed you just being late so let's just kind of show you some film this is from this year this is again um you know us playing the 20 personnel what we call america's offense you can see the techniques labeled out there for you um, as you let it play in action, as you can see, we're getting that good double team right there on that slot, the good double team on the backside X. We're in man-to-man -man coverage out there, and you can see we have the ability to take away what they're trying to do, right, and be aggressive with our principles, and then gain foxes and snakes, right, and then get the middle of the field close defenses that you like to see, even though you're playing light box principles. One of the things you have to understand is that we are a man-free team as well. So we teach kids how to play man match, right? So if you're going to play man match quarters, you better be able to be, if you will, willing to play man free and teach these men how to play leverage on receivers, using dividers, if you will, using position maintenance and knowing how to help and if you will give help based on what the quarterback and the route patterns are giving you. 
The next thing I want to show you is just when it goes into motion, a two by two, it just turns into a palms read on the back side. But notice down here at the Indian first, that inside breaking route, the Hoosier now takes that inside breaking route. The Boomer is going to fox the post. And when our other safety feels that, he kind of sloughs off and he has the ability to, if you will, close the middle of the field, start double teaming. And we're gaining, if you will, eyes and we're daily, if we will, being able to be the aggressor on defense because we're allowing our eyes and our coaching progression and teaching progression to allow kids to play at a high level, we feel like, because we work this, if you will, from man free all the way through their coverages to quarters. Also, again, keep going fast with the film. This is a 11 personnel look. This was the clip I was telling you about, Allen Eagles. That's slot receiver. And what you're seeing there, that's Hawkins, a fantastic football player. We're making his first read gone. And a quarterback, no offense, he's great. But making him become, you know, Brady and go from inside to outside to throw the numbers, as you can see, that's an advantage to us. We made him play with his, if you will, left hand. And that's what we try to promise our kids with this stuff is whatever tool we got to put together. Again, today we're talking at seven Indian, but whatever tool in that toolbox we had earlier, we'll go through that toolbox each week and try to give ourselves the best, if you will, situation against our opponents. Going to give you a nub trips motion of pro twins, right? So what you're going to notice here is it's a great coverage against screens in passing situations because your linebackers are in man coverage. You'll notice that by the motion, it's going to bring our backer back into the box. He's going to stick his eyes out and tell you, I'm on that back. The seven's a really good player. He's back there for a reason. And we're able to be in man coverage, even though we're playing these double team light box principles. And if you will, serious third and six, because this is third and six, you know, this is a good call for us. Again, pro twins. Against the Allen Eagles, you're going to notice right here just the ability to take on the screen on first down. So I showed you being a great call on third down. Yeah, Coach, you call it on third down. Yeah, we call it on first down, too, because of the eyes and the leverage it gives our players to be, if you will, in a good position to be athletic. Excuse me. This year against Highland Park, this is what I love about this. You'll notice when the play stalls, it's a third and 18 clip. Look at us playing the sticks. Look at the leverage of the defensive backs. All, if you will, upfield foots are almost about to be planted at the same time, ready to break on the quarterback's intentions. And we, again, are doing some really fun stuff. You know, I talked to you guys about Coach McLaughlin and Coach Lewis, Coach Fight, those guys the front. Look at the presentation we're giving them, right? And we're just playing our principles that we work every day in our, if you will, pass Kelly. And just getting the quarterback, if you will, to, if you will move a little bit and give our eyes a chance to break on the football and allow our great players to be great. Two by two, again, doubles, Indian on your right side, palms on your left, pattern matching, sticking their feet in the ground, a third and 12, sitting on the sticks. And again, breaking on the football and being in a confident top leverage, top shoulder position against our opponents. Here again is number seven against Prosper. We showed him in the backfield around the screen. We get him in the backfield, so we change it from our normal palms. We switch this to Savage so that the strong safety, our free safety coming down is playing a boomer technique now, and now that inside backer is playing the Hoosier. And when you see we're double-team coning the guy that they really want to throw the ball to so we can take the guy that they want away and make them play left-handed. See the presentation that Coach McLaughlin and Coach Lewis, Coach Fight, and them are developing, changing and messing up protections and trying to get a four-man pass rush as effective and, if you will, as control the pocket as we can, what we like to consider controlled chaos. Two by two doubles, parts out. Now we have to have system built-in checks, right? We have to have a system that's built in that our kids can handle situations. So this is our pyramid check to stacks so that we're going to be able and always to be double teaming the deepest inside route. And if you will, gain stock or snakes and foxes again, just based on the fact that if, uh, you know, we have the ability to work two to one based on what the receivers are getting. Yes, we are a nickel based defense, so we can use our overhangs different. The thing about it is it's multiple. So if you give us fib, we can super rotate. We'll just play four mod like you saw in the toolbox earlier. So that's a star so that we can play the boot out with Mr. Hawkins, who's a fantastic player. Just not allowing the offense to put our defense in a situation that's not a good situation. You know, I feel like so many times when I was a young football coach, we were so rule based. Our rules actually hurt us at times, even though they kept us, if you will, to alignment, stance, key responsibility, all those great things. 
but it also limited our ability to be flexible. You know, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. You know, the tree that breaks in the wind are the stiff branches. The ones that flow like, you know, have that ability to bend and evolve um, are the guys that are going to play good defense. And as coaches, I think we've got to evolve too. Our ever evolution as coaches and how we're doing things. So I was telling you, I'll show you some of the run fits. I know I'm close on time. I'm flying down there. But, you know, the thing it does, guys, it doesn't put us in RPO conflict. So no offense to offensive coaches, but when you put yourself where you're not having overhangs in the run fit and you're allowing your players to play pass or run, not run or pass based on what they see, not having to read off a key, play with man eyes, it allows you to play this 20 personnel hybrid RPO offense. And that's Hawkins, guys, a fantastic player. And that was our game plan, as you can see, against him. We didn't necessarily say we want you to run the ball, Mr. Hawkins, but what we didn't want him to have is the ability to stretch us, if you will, laterally as he attacked us vertically. Here it is to more of a 21 personnel look. So, again, I'll get to the box view. You know, right here you have number nine, a tight end on the right, number eight, a tight end on the left. This is a 21 personnel look, and we're fitting the box with six players. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on six. I mean, or sorry, it's just a, a crazy number system we're trying to succeed in. But you can see the techniques and the things that we're playing with, and it's still allowing our defense to be aggressive against the RPO. I think you'll really like this clip here. Again, notice that eight offensive guys in the core. We have six defensive guys in the core. And so when the play develops, you can see right here that because of what Coach McLaughlin teaches with our gap and a half techniques and being a thick and punch, you know, peak and punch guys and striking and falling back into gaps that allows us to keep players out of the fit and insert guys as needed and play light boxes down after down after down. Again, you can see right here, eight on six, 20 personnel. Here's the play. And we're able with technique, stack track, fall back and have the overhang come in late because we understand our fits and how the ball's going to roll off the table when we're getting certain looks. I'll finish with this clip right here. Again, eight on six. Um, and then, again, why we're doing this is because if you give us two remove receivers, we're playing three over two. We're forcing you to try to do things that we feel like are unconventional, which is continually run the football when that's not something they always practice. They all In practice, they pull it, they throw the RPO. We feel if we're making them do something off rhythm, that gives our players advantage. We got full box sets to handle formations, um, just so we don't ever put our kids in a bad spot. So I know I talk fast, and I know I went fast. That's two minutes, you know, into my time. I got, the, I got three minutes left for questions. But, you know, we just love what we do at Louisville. We love how we do it. Um, we think we give our kids, a, you know, a chance. And, again, if you would like to get with me any time, um, we certainly can. As you can see, you know, we have a, a huge library of things that we like to teach. And, you know, we can also, you know, show you how we teach this. So not only we talk about being a boomer technique, um, but you can see on the screen, we can talk to you about how we teach scooch slot man technique, how it's an off catch and just into the drills and all the things that we talk about um, when it gets in. Because, again, our idea is to build the techniques, the techniques that become the defense that we use. And then week to week, yeah, we have a big Waffle House menu defense, but we get a good little lunch menu put together and we go to work on Monday and we coach that stuff up and our kids play hard for us. And we're very lucky to be Louisville Fighting Farmers. Well, Coach, I will say fantastic job. My phone was blowing up as you were speaking to people just sending me messages. So great job. I mean, like I do have I do have one question unless somebody puts something in the chat, then I'll we'll add from there. Um, but like when you're, how I'll phrase it this way, how, from your technique standpoint, how much do they build off each other or how much, cause I'm assuming most of your kids are one way. Um, yes. So, so how much they are, build off each other completely? So for instance, our corners start off playing press man technique. That's a technique they're going to use when they're playing Indian, they're in Meg, and they're OYO on your own. So they understand how to play press man. We play bump press man technique. That stars you can see right now on my screen, I'm showing you our stars practicing a scooch. Now we use this scooch when we're playing seven Indian. We use this scooch when we're playing Rip and Liz match cover three. We also use this scooch when we're playing on the hash as a baby tempo scooch when we're playing palms. So we don't have, if you will, a hard deck when we're playing palms or two read. We get bat, bat, Bap, if that receiver is vertical past that landmark, I don't care if he's in or out or overhang, that's too great for me as a coach. He's vertical, we turn it into mod. Um, and again, you know, everything that we teach in our defense, we teach every kid how to do it. So this is, you can see just us right here, just working the scooch. And, 
you know, all the techniques that we teach, just like you said, go into all of our coverages. So we play match. We play cover one, rack, right? We play match cover three. We play these all these quarters, brackets, tools. And then we would play the Mary Hardin Baylor Tampa 2 vision, right? And then we can get into some zebra cover three, you know, based on if we get true 21 personnel coach, I'm not going to play Ripley's match. We're going to play zebra principles, and we're going to get true seam curl flat defenders and reroute and do all the things that Coach Roberts talks about. But I think it's what you said. It's the scaffolding. Um, but it's the experience in this defense and the ability to say how long we've been running this defense and running these coverages, how long I've been doing it. I think it's the teaching progression. This is what we do day one, page one. And when we start in the offseason, we're building the techniques so that when we put in stubby coverage, we tell that overhang star, hey, man, you're playing scooch catch man on number two. You're all a number two unless three is fast. Well, where'd you learn that, kid? Well, when you were playing your rip list match cover three rules, when you had all of two out and up with three fast rules in your rip list match, we just layer it. Okay, perfect, coach. Well, um, as coaches uh, finishing up here and uh, as we kind of get ready for our next speaker, a um, couple things. Um, one, coach did a great job. If you need to get a hold of them, um, you can easily fo follow them on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Um, doesn't really matter to be honest. Um, but coaches on there at Coach C Hall. Um, so you can get a hold of coaches there. Um, I mean, coach have already kind of talked about him come back possibly next month because I'll say I'll be at least doing these monthly through the spring. So I've kind of talked to him a little bit. Well, I got narrowed down some dates and some other stuff, and then me and him will talk from there. But coach did a great job. And like, like he said, if you want more detail on anything he did, because he threw a lot out there. In a 25 minute period. Um, do not hesitate to reach out to coach, uh, to contact coach, and kind of uh, go from there. Thanks, coach.